with our skirt patterns, we use math that people have used for centuries, I think. So I usually take a front and a back piece that I had traced off of one of their other shirts and I make it with knit fabric and it slides over her head. The fabric that I'm using today is very thin in a good way and it's a little bit stretchy but it's not knit fabric. So that's why I have to use Velcro to stick it together. So for the front, I have to turn a curved neck into a v-neck. For the back, I need to make two pieces that overlap enough to add Velcro. So, let's try this. The first thing I'm going to do is trace the back, since that seems like it's going to be the hardest thing. But I'm just going to trace half of the back. I added a couple centimeters to this just in case so this is what I've drawn and this is half the shirt but without the arm so now I'm going to add a little more than the length of this velcro so that I can actually hem it a little bit when I put the velcro on as well Okay, that actually doesn't look as bad as I thought it would be. The other thing that I want to do is make this come down just a little bit. There we go. Okay, that actually looks really good. I'm happy with that. Now what I will do again is I'm just going to cut on the top because you can always hem it to make it lower. You cannot add, but you can take away. So that's just something I've learned. <laughs> okay, so I think that looks good. And what makes the most sense to me is instead of tracing it again and coming up with a good enough back, is mirroring this. Cutting it out, flipping it over on the other side, and having two exact mirror images. So I'll do that. But first, I want to make the front. The front is a little bit harder because every time the back is gonna come up higher. So what I always try and do is I just fold the back under. As you can see, you can't see the back. So I'm lining up the bottom, folding the back, and tracing. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit because as I said, the fabric I'm working with is not stretchy. I'm also going to add some on the bottom. I'm going to do this on the other one too. Before I cut it out, I'll add some on the bottom for seam allowance. And what I like to do on these is when I do cut them out, I fold them in half and just sort of try to even it up. Now I'm going to make it v-neck. So when I cut it out, I'm going to cut it out on these lines so that I can fold it over in half. So I'm just going to cut out this, fold it in half, and uh, even it up. And then this one, so I'm gonna add some seam allowance on the bottom, cut it out, and make a mirror image for the other side. And I will get back to you. Okay, so I've done a lot of the steps beforehand because part one was so long, I wanted part two to be pretty short. We made the pattern and then we cut it out and when I cut it out I just folded over the paper so I got two mirror images of the back part and then the front part was just uh, one piece. So I took those and then I sewed them together on the sleeves and on the arms and then I hemmed the armholes and then I just sort of um, take little tucks in here and there when I feel like I need them. I tried it on my doll multiple times and I saw that I needed a tuck right here. So I just sort of measured with my fingers 
what angle I needed it at, sewed it, and tested it. I did have to make it go a little bit farther down a couple on both sides, but that was fine. Then I added Velcro, and the Velcro, it wasn't working terribly great. So when I was sewing the armholes, I was having quite a bit of trouble um, getting them the right length because they needed to fit on her arm, but I didn't want them to be super baggy. So I ended up actually sewing a lot of the two pieces when I sewed the armholes together. So I had to make up that room somehow. So what I did was I added a cuff for the Velcro. All you do is take a strip of fabric that's two times the length you want, you fold it in half, and then you sew that and to the um, whatever you're sewing it to, front sides facing. And that's what I did on both sides. And I have a little cuff, and then I attached my Velcro to that. So now the back Velcros, and it's a real shirt. And now what I'm going to do is something that I think really will help make it look like it was perfectly made for a doll. So when I make stuff for my doll, um, sleeves are very hard, but sleeveless looks a little bit weird on her given that she is um, made of fabric down to here. So this was the perfect um, thing to make it an easy sew um, for the sleeves, but also uh, cover up the fabric. So. This came as the edge of the fabric, and I just cut it off. It's a very pretty ruffle, and I'm going to make it go around her collar like this. But nicer, and so not. <laughs> so, um, the way that I was originally going to do that was I was going to have two pieces that sort of just went like this. But I was thinking about it, and I was like, it'll look weird to have to, like, because one side is hemmed, and I have to hem the other, and I'm not going to do as good job hemming as whoever hemmed these um, sheets, because it was a sheet. Um, so I thought it would look weird. But what I can do is I can hem it in the back, where not many people are going to be looking, because I'm going to be holding her. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm going to fold it exactly in half. And I'm going to sew a 45 degree angle right here, or it's going to be around 45. What I like to do is I sort of just hold my hands right, hold my hand where it would be folded, and it gives you a pretty good idea of what the seam will look like. And I want it to be, I guess, more of a 90 degree angle like this. And it will fit on the shirt pretty well, I think. So this should be the front. So I am going to sew this um, to the angle that I want, just on the front, and then I'll get back to you for the next section. So I'll see you in a minute when I'm done with that. I figured out that by making two extra tucks on each side, I can make it basically modeled to her shoulder. It is very rounded now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my shirt. I'm just going to sew it. Now right side of the ruffle facing the wrong side of the shirt. We're going to sew it. Then you're going to flip it out and you're going to want to press it flat. And then we'll come back for the final step of adding it together. Okay, so I sewed it on. I ironed it. And I think it looks amazing. So, da da! But so this is the back. Now we're ready to get our circle skirt all the way ready to be attached to our shirt. So, stitch length to the biggest one. Turn your stitch length to a nice basting stitch. I usually use one, but today I'm using four for my basting stitch. Okay, so you've got your dress. And literally all you're going to do is just take it and sew all the way around. Um, don't tie off either end. We'll do that in a minute. So I'm going to do that and see you in a minute. Okay, so I did it and I now you're just going to pull the thread 
And then just go back and do a backward and a forward stitch. And then we're gonna get on to the next step. I put the shirt on my doll and I put the skirt on and it fits perfectly and I made a discovery. I think it is super duper cute together, but also separately. So, I was originally planning on making an Easter dress, but it's actually gonna be an Easter outfit. I'm going to actually make this into a skirt that can be worn with or without the top. And then I'm, all I have to do to make this a functional top is hem the bottom. It's a tiny bit long, which is very nice. The skirt can always come up over the excess. So all I'm gonna do is hem the bottom just a tiny bit, and then the top is done. So I think you know how to hem the bottom skirt. I measured the elastic and I added a very small amount. And you're gonna fold it in half. If your elastic has a front and a back, which I don't think elastic does, but if yours happens to, you're gonna do front sides together and you're gonna sew. I'm going to do a straight stitch. You're going to open it up like that and just sew down and it's going to create a very nice looking finish. And then you are simply going to line it up the way you want to and surprise sew it okay so I've done everything and I'm ready to give you guys the grand reveal but first I'm just gonna run through it really quickly so we made our pattern and we cut out the pieces making sure there were two of the back pieces we sewed the top part and the sides and hem to the armholes then um, I added a cuff on the two sides of the back or if you have enough just hem it and add your velcro um, then I did this last but this would be a good time to do it is hemming the bottom and then you take your big long strip of fabric um, make little tucks in it where you need and sew it on and you're done with the top part so then for the skirt if you make it as big as I did I if I had just taken the elastic and stretched it as I sewn it sewed it it would not have been tight enough for her waist so what I did was I changed my stitch length to the highest and then I sewed around it, tightened it, and did a back and forth stitch on it. Then I took my elastic and sewed it. So ready for the grand reveal? Ta-da! Now she is able to wear this shirt to dress up her and the skirt looks good with a lot of the shirts she owns and she has a really cute dress for Easter. So thank you for watching this video and please remember to like and subscribe to my channel. Bye!